Welcome to the Green Wasp Removal YouTube channel. In this episode, we respond to a local residence here in Northeast Indiana to inspect a wood pile that seemed to have a swarm of bees around it. The property owner called us to assess the situation in case there was any danger to people in the area. This footage was filmed on April 30th, 2024 in the springtime. When you show up on a property in the springtime, you never know if you're going to run into a large colony of honeybees, which can be very aggressive at times, or if you're going to run into little native bees who are much smaller and very docile. Fortunately, the bees turned out to be very beneficial native pollinator bees, often called mason bees. These gentle little bees are smaller and darker colored than honeybees, and they are extremely important pollinators for the local ecosystem. They are solitary bees, so they are not aggressive, they do not form large social colonies or nests, instead they work individually and the females make a small nest on their own with just a few eggs in it. The eggs develop into larvae and then create a cocoon where they hibernate over winter. In the springtime they emerge from their winter hibernation as adult bees and then leave their nest to mate. Once mated, the males die off while the females begin making their own individual nests usually in small tunnels inside wood or sometimes inside hollow plant materials like reeds or stems. The females lay their eggs inside individual cells in the tunnel. Then they collect pollen for their larva to feed on and they pack that into the tunnel. Then they seal off their nest tunnel with mud and that creates a safe little enclosed nest. Their mud masonry skills are why they are called mason bees. Here you see what their tunnel front door looks like when it's been sealed off with a mud cap. See how it's packed into the entry of that tunnel. This mud protects that tunnel for the entire season and eventually it will dry out and look a little bit lighter colored. This is very fresh mud. Here we captured some footage of one of the female bees finishing up her nest. She's filling the mud into the entrance of the tunnel here. And so she's just about done. For comparison purposes, we're going to show you here some still images of what honeybees look like when they land on a wood pile. As you can see, they look entirely different. There's thousands of them at one time. They're very tan and orangey looking in color compared to the dark little mason bees. And as you can see here, you should never deal with a bee swarm that's honeybees without full protection because you just never know with honeybees if you're going to run into a colony that has Africanized genetics, which are very dangerous, very aggressive. With the little mason bees, you're never going to have to worry about that. They're smaller, they're darker, they're super sweet and friendly. There's no issue with them at all as far as aggression. Even though they don't form large colonies because they're individual nest builders, you still may see a bunch of them around the same area like a wood pile because each of the individuals likes the same wood pile, they're going to live next door to each other, but they're not one nest. So they don't act defensively because they're not defending a large nest. And there is no caste system, like a whole caste of guard bees, for example, in a honeybee colony. That doesn't exist with little individual bees like mason bees. Studies indicate that these native bees are far more efficient than honeybees at pollinating our native plants, gardens, and fruit trees this is because native bees evolved in unison with our native plant species over millennia and so became very efficient pollination specialists for these specific plants. Honeybees, on the other hand, are not native to North America. Honeybees were brought to North America in the 1400s by European colonists who simply wanted them as livestock, but they were not native to the area. They soon escaped their managed hives run by the colonists into the local environment where they became an invasive species that has had an ongoing negative impact on our native pollinators. So these little mason bees are just extremely valuable to our ecosystem. They belong here, they work in unison with our native plants, and they should be protected as much or more than honeybees. Fortunately, this property owner did the right thing. Once we explained to them the beneficial nature of these little bees, they decided to let them stay. They're not aggressive. They almost never sting anyone unless they're directly crushed on purpose by a person or something, but otherwise they'll leave you alone and they ignore you while they go about their very important business in the ecosystem, pollinating throughout the spring season. And usually they only live about six or eight weeks, some of them a little bit longer, 
but they're gone in just a few weeks and it's best to just let them do what they do. So we'll transition here over to field audio that we collected on April 30th of 2024. You can see footage of these bees building their nests, coming in and out of their nesting holes and going about their business as they set up their spring nests. And it's always fascinating to watch bees in the wild. So we'll just let you see what we saw and hear what we heard. You see how the bee comes out with a mandible full of sawdust. It's actively digging its nest. It'll come out, deposit the sawdust outside, and then go back in and collect more. And what's happening here is this entire wood pile is acting as an excellent nesting site for some very important native pollinators. So if you see this type of activity, where the bees are actually going in and out of these small holes that they make in the wood and you're not in a place that's going to be inconvenient for you, then by all means leave these here. They only last a few weeks, I think around six weeks on average, and then they're gone. But the work they do in the ecosystem is so important and you don't want to interrupt that if they're simply out here on a pile of firewood that won't be used until the winter time anyway. So they're out of the way, they're not aggressive. As you can see, you know, you can put your hand right up to them. Um, they simply don't attack, they don't sting, they're not aggressive, uh, they don't have any problem with people. I mean, if you were to try to crush it in your fingers or something, they might respond, but otherwise there's no, no risk at all, typically. demonstrate the docile nature of these bees. You can see right here, if you, if you come up to the bee and touch it, it might sniff you and see what you are, but they're simply not interested in attacking. So that is, is not their nature generally. So you see it'll just kind of walk right up on your finger and you can say hi little bee. They're very docile, very friendly, and really not a threat in any way. So if you can possibly let these stay where they are when you find them, that's absolutely the thing to do, because they're, they're just great for the environment. Here you go, buddy. Here you see one of the mason bees applying mud to the door of her tunnel. And this will seal it off for the season and allow her babies to be raised inside that tunnel. In this way, they're safe from outside attack, from birds or ants running up on them and that kind of thing. There are still some risks even inside the sealed tunnel. Sometimes mites or parasitic larvae from other insects can attack these 
babies and larvae inside the sealed tunnel, but overall it works pretty well. So as you see here, there's many, many little individual bees flying around the same wood pile. If you see something like this, don't confuse it for honeybees, which would have thousands of bees all congregating into the same entry point. Don't confuse it with yellow jackets, which are also a very large social colony, and they'll all kind of come and go from the same entry point. These little bees are all going in individual spaces. They're not organized because they all work alone. That's the way you can tell the difference. And that's the way you can avoid trying to spray them because you think they're dangerous or something. We'll show you some close-up imagery here of one of these mason bees. They're cute little fuzzy bees with dark bodies. They don't really look much like a honeybee. On this same day, April 30th of 24, we captured a honeybee, which you see inside the container here. Just for comparison, compare the coloring of the mason bee in the insert image on the left to the honeybee on the right. They look entirely different if you look up close for details. The mason bee is smaller, it's darker, and the honey bee is larger and more tan orange colored, or maybe the color of honey by comparison. And there's a difference in the aggression level as well. The honey bee will come out swinging and attempt to sting if it's threatened, whereas the mason bee will simply fly away or stay where it is. It won't even move sometimes. And you can see on the honey bee's legs, the pollen sacs where they collect all their yellow pollen. So that's another way to tell between a honeybee and a mason bee or another native bee. In general, in the bee world, honeybees and bumblebees, that kind of bee, will carry pollen on their legs, whereas mason bees and other small native bees will often carry it on what's called a scopa, which is a series of hair structures on their abdomen. So they often call mason bees belly flopper pollinators because of that reason. They'll land on a plant and flop their abdomen on top of the pollens and carry the pollen off to their nest on their abdomen. And this process is actually quite a bit more efficient in pollinating plants. For comparison purposes, here we have a mason bee captured in one of the similar containers. And you can see how much darker it is than the honey bee. It just looks different. The entire abdomen almost looks black compared to a honey bee. And it has hair all over its body, more so I'd say than a honey bee most of the time. On the underside of the abdomen, you can see the scopa has pollen all over it, kind of a bright yellow color underneath the abdomen as it comes by. You can see it a little better in certain angles. And just in general, mason bees are just a little smaller than honey bees, and they often seem a little bit less active, like they might sit more often in one place than a honey bee tends to. So if you run into any bees that are smaller than honey bees, a little darker than honey bees, and they're pretty mellow, you're probably looking at a great native pollinator. So be kind to them, treat them with respect, and protect them when you can. These little bees need all the help they can get, and they are actually more important in North America than the honey bee will ever be, because the honey bee never belonged here in the first place and really is an invasive bee. The fact is, honey bees are raised by the billions all over the country and all over the world. They're not going anywhere anytime soon. Whereas all our native pollinator bees, almost nobody's looking out for them. They need all the help they can get. So get yourself a native pollinator garden growing. You can find out which plants to use on the internet, on Google. You can do the same thing to learn how to build native bee habitats, or you can even buy ready-made native bee habitats. Look up bees like mason bees, leafcutter bees, miner bees, sweat bees. There's 4,000 species or more of native bees in North America alone. Obviously, never use pesticides of any kind unless you absolutely have to, and then use the least amount possible and the least toxic type that you can find. 
Just do whatever you can reasonably do to help our native bees and all our native insects get a leg up in the ecosystem. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Thank you.